Salim, one day you'll fly over the water like it's nothing, I promise. You're looking very beautiful this morning, Beatrice Hamilton. How nice of you to say. Did you sleep in today? No, I was just out walking. Ain't we getting more like a Hampton every day? Now, Emma, shut your mouth, Emma. It's okay, Lois. She's just teasing. Did you lose another button? Bring it up to me later. I'll sew it back on for you. Mrs. Hamilton is asking for you. Mm. And what'll it be today? Lawn tennis, then a few hours of poetry reading? Don't forget that shirt. Why are you so nasty to the girl all the time? It's so hard to be the companion to a rich girl. I told you to shut your mouth. Edie's one of us. You ought to think about things before letting that nastiness fly out of your mouth. Edith, please sit down. So, what are you and Amy doing today? I haven't seen her yet this morning. Well, please encourage her to get outside, won't you? Yes. Can't be good to read all the time, can it? No. <sighs> Did you ask to see me? Well, my head is in the clouds today, isn't it? We're expecting a distant cousin of mine, and I am so distracted. Ida Glenshaw is her name. Poor dear, she's lost her parents. She's been living with two ancient great aunts, Jane and Clara. A rather doer pair, if I recall. And so I've agreed to help Ida find a suitable husband. After all, we'll have the most eligible bachelor staying right here with us for the Greens Cup, Mr. James Percy. He's from a very good family. A little gangly, if I recall. And then Frederick Arlington will be staying with the Johnstons, so two exceptional bachelors. Um, I would like you to join us for tea today. Me? Join you for tea? I would like you to make Ida feel welcome. I know if you made it your personal mission, then of course she would. Of course, if you think I could be helpful. Edith, you're never anything but. And perhaps you can persuade Ida not to let Mr. Percy's physical appearance keep her from considering him. <laughs> the terrible truth is, she has no property and she's not getting any younger. And then it will be Amy's turn. Our little girl. And then you'll be gone. I will. Well, Edith, dear, you're not going to want to stay here forever. But I never thought of leaving Evenswood. Where would I go? Well, you mustn't worry. Whoever would want to marry me? I'm not good at anything. I blurt out embarrassing things at inappropriate moments. The art of flirtation is desperately lost on me. I can't ride, or hunt, or dance. I'm afraid, my dear friend, you are stuck with me for as long as you have me. Oh, Amy, you mustn't judge yourself by other people's standards. Your attributes are unique. But they're there for all of us to see. Do you think we've yet satisfied Mama's requirement for fresh air? Oh, we've just started. Yes, but Shakespeare waits for us. Oh. Can't we go back and read some more? You can read Julia. Then you are desperate. We left Romeo waiting for her beneath her balcony. 
So you're coming to tea at last? Mm. I'm so afraid I'm going to say something stupid. Oh, that's what tea is for. To say all the stupid things you've been saving up. <laughs> what is your cousin Ida like? Ida? I barely remember her. Poor thing if she has to come all this way to find a suitable husband. <gasps> I, I can't do it right now, Lewis. Guest has arrived, and I'm expected for tea. You're having tea with the Hamiltons? Please forgive my husband, Ida, dear. He's becoming a contrarian in his dotage. Oh, it's just I have a bee in my bonnet about women riding side saddle. Well, don't you think it's rather ironic that in, in our concern for the propriety of the ladies, we force ladies to risk their necks. They should ride astride like men. But the scandal. The hunt clubs would have us arrested for being a public disgrace. Oh, wonderful. A night in jail would do us all a world of good. Maybe we could discuss something a little less political. What? Perhaps our anticipated guest, Mr. James Percy. Doesn't ride side saddle, does he? I heard his heart has been broken. No gossip, child. The rumor is that James Percy fell in love with a girl. Desperately. He was about to ask her to marry him when he found out his brother loved her, too. Well, he never said a word. Not even when his brother asked him to stand for him at their wedding. This was years ago, and he's never given his heart again. How tragic. It simply means he hasn't found the right person yet. Or, on the other hand, maybe no one would have him. He was rather unattractive. Looks aren't that important. Uh, isn't that right, Edith, dear? What do you think of Mr. Percy's situation? I think you are right. Uh, a person's face can change over a lifetime, but the heart can stay true forever. It seems that Mr. Percy has a very pure and beautiful heart, one that would be worth winning. Well said, Edith, dear. <laughs> Edith, you're a romantic poet. <laughs> 